What's up guys? I'm Rustin from RossmerTech.com. How are you guys doing? I'm doing well. Hopefully you guys are doing well today too. On this video, we have an exciting video for you guys. I'm really excited. I'm really pumped up. Hopefully you're going to be pumped up too. Because in this video, we're going to use a Raspberry Pi 4 to hack three Raspberry Pi 3s. Yes, we'll be hacking. Now, again, in this video, we're going to use one Raspberry Pi to hack four Raspberry Pi 3s. We're going to use a program called RPI Hunter. The program basically scans for Raspberry Pis on the network. Once those Raspberry Pis are located, it tries to log in using its uh, default username and password. So if those Raspberry Pis have default usernames and password, it's able to log into those Pis. Then we could send any type of payload that we want. And I'll show you guys the different types of payloads and what we can do with Raspberry Pi Hunter. So without further ado, let's get started with this video. All right, guys, so this is the recording setup right now. We got actually five Raspberry Pis here. There are four Raspberry Pi 3s and one Raspberry Pi 4 right here. The one is my main one. Uh, this is the one I'm gonna use to hack the other ones. And uh, all of them are connected except for one. This one here, I, I didn't have an ethernet cable. So there's gonna be three other Raspberry Pis connected. So a total of four Raspberry Pis connected. Now I got the keyboard, I got the mouse, they're all connected to the keyboard right here. And uh, we're ready to go. If you, if you guys are wondering what all this is, I'm gonna leave a link to everything here in the description. This right here on the right, I don't know if you can see it. This here is a powered USB switch. I'm able to power all these Raspberry Pis just using this one switch. It's pretty cool, I'll leave a link in the description. And uh, they're all connected to this one Netgear switch that's on the right here. So this is the one that's on the right. And they're all connected. I, I activated SSH on all of them. You have to enable SSH on all of them. If you don't enable SSH in any of the Pis, they won't work. You can't access them. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's get started with the hacking. All right, so now we're ready to start hacking. There's a few things we're gonna need to do before we get started. I have a page open here and I have a terminal open here. So basically what this terminal is, it's, uh, it's something called PuTTY. It's a program that allows me to remotely access things. I use it to remotely access Raspberry Pis. Right now I'm remotely accessing one of my Raspberry Pis. I'm using, uh, I think the Raspberry Pi 4 right now. And um, so I'm remotely accessing that Raspberry Pi 4 and I'm gonna use that Raspberry Pi 4 to hack the other Raspberry Pis. So there's a total of four Raspberry Pis connected right now. Basically, uh, to get this to work, you're gonna need something that has Python installed and you're gonna need an internet connection installed. I recommend using uh, something like a Raspberry Pi or a Linux distro or stuff like that. And uh, once you have that all set up, we can move on to the next step. And the next step is actually on this left side here. This is the page that's opened up. This is the, the official page for uh, RPI Hunter. If you guys don't know, RPI Hunter basically is a program that scans for Raspberry Pis. Once it finds the Raspberry Pis, it'll automatically try to log in using the uh, default username and password. So once it finds uh, Raspberry Pis with the default username and password, it sends payloads. We could send different payloads. Payloads are basically some, something to execute. A payload could be like rebooting the computer. It, another payload could be updating the computer. One could be like deleting files. What uh, There are a bunch of payloads that I'm gonna show you guys. But the first thing we're gonna need to do is scroll down here. Uh, they make this uh, so simple. All you have to do is copy stuff. So this is big line of code down here we're gonna copy with the one that says one line variant from sudo until end of pi. Copy it there. Make sure you don't copy the usage. All right, so copy it, paste it, hit enter. So what, what's gonna happen is it's gonna install a bunch of things, including RPI Hunter. Give it like two minutes to install. Once it's finished installing, we're gonna move on to the next step. All right, now it's asking us to uh, hit yes or no. Make sure you select yes, hit enter. Now it's gonna do some more stuff. I'll be back once it's finished. All right, so it's finished. So now what we're going to do is we're gonna copy something else here. We're gonna scroll down. We're gonna copy this line of code here where it says run. Uh, and then the list part, this whole thing right here, copy it, paste it. If it worked, you should see the RPI logo on top. Let me just make this bigger so it's easier to see. As you can see, this is the RPI logo, right? And uh, what I did is uh, this command here will list all the available payloads. So this is just some of them, this is not all of them. So this is some of the main ones here. And these, these are uh, the name we would use when we're uh, trying to send a payload. Rainbow, install, warning, and all this other stuff. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna copy some other stuff. Um, 
we're gonna hit the up arrow. Oops, hitting the up arrow allows us to uh, bring back the last thing we executed. We're just gonna delete this list part right here. Now we're gonna type in here, um, we're gonna type in help, double hyphen, then help, H-E-L-P. This will give us uh, the formatting for the commands, when, the way we, we should set them up before they're executed. So, you know, they have all these here. The main one we're gonna use here is uh, R. R will allow us to specify a uh, IP range to scan. So we're gonna do that right now. My IP address is 192.168.1. Uh, so the network should be dot zero. Uh, figure out where your IP address is, your, your local IP, not, not your like your internet's IP, your, your local IP address. Most people use a 192.168.1, but figure out where your network is, then type that in. But we're going to hit up on the arrow again. We're gonna delete help, right? I'm gonna delete it. We're gonna type in one hyphen because we want the IP range. And then we're gonna type in R. We wanna hit space. My IP address again is 192.168.1.0 is the network address. So I'm gonna hit forward slash 24. Then I'm gonna hit space. We're gonna do a double hyphen and type in payload, P-A-Y-L-O-A-D. So basically this is command. This command is telling uh, RPI to the, the R is telling it to scan an IP range. We're giving an IP range of uh, 192.168.1.0, scan the entire network. Then this command here, this payload command, it tells it we wanna send it a payload. Now we're gonna do a, a simple one right now. We're just gonna, t uh, we're gonna use the quotes here. We're gonna type in who am I? If you guys don't know, this is a Linux command. And basically, it uh, when you send this to somebody, uh, you're gonna get back their name if you're if you're connected to the network, or if, or if you do it on yourself, you you would get back your IP address. But in this case, we're gonna get back uh, the IP addresses of all the Raspberry Pis that are in our network. So it's basically gonna scan our network. It's gonna send the payload. Who am I? It's gonna find all the Raspberry Pis. It's gonna tr it's gonna try the username and password, the default one. Then if it's successful, then if it's successful, it's going to send this payload. So let's hit enter. Boom. It's doing it right now. It's, it's sending the stuff. We're getting back stuff right here. As you can see, there are a couple of Raspberry Pis connected. I'm highlighting them, highlighting them right now. I ha there's a dot 10 and a dot 13. There, there are more of them, but for some reason, only two of them popped up, but it doesn't matter. This will, this will show you that it, this actually does work. You know what I mean? There are other Raspberry Pis. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, attack this dot 10 right now. We know that this dot 10 has a default password because it brought this up. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to what's happening is it's freezing right now because it scanned and it found in other devices. This other device is trying to do is send that payload to. So it's freezing. It's not getting a response back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in control C to terminate that. So now we're back to where we where we were. We're gonna hit the up arrow to bring uh, the last command we, we just executed. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're just gonna delete a few things. We're gonna change the address. So we're gonna keep this command. This is uh, again, a who am I command, but now we're just gonna specify a specific uh, Raspberry Pi. We're gonna use the dot, dot 10 here. We're gonna specify the dot 10. So we're just gonna delete this part here. And uh, mine says 192.168.1. Now we're going to type in the dot 10 to specify that specific Raspberry Pi, and it's only going to send this payload to that specific Raspberry Pi. So what, we sh what we're going to get back is uh, the Raspberry Pi's name. By default, the Raspberry Pi network name is Pi. So if we get a Pi back, that means this worked. So we're going to hit enter. It's scanning, it's sending the payload, and we're receiving stuff back, and boom, it worked. It sent the payload to this Raspberry Pi here, and it got back Pi. So if this worked, it means it means that the Raspberry Pi used the, the default username and password. This is why 
a tool like this is so powerful. Most people do not change their username and password, especially when it comes to Raspberry Pis. They figure, you know, why would anybody want to even bother hacking a Raspberry Pi? Well, uh, a lot of people, you know, because you, once you get into the Raspberry Pi, you, you can pretty much get into other stuff in the network. So it's it's it's, it's like a secret back door, and there are other other programs, but this is a pr pretty good one. And uh, we're gonna do one more. We're actually gonna restart the, this uh, Raspberry Pi, the one we just got the payload from, and we got the response with a Pi. We're gonna we're gonna reboot that computer. So we're gonna hit the up arrow again to bring back the last command, and we're just gonna change the payload from who am I to uh, again we're gonna use quotes to uh, sudo. Sudo is a is a Linux command. It basically gives you like. Uh, uh, it's a higher privilege, so it allow you to do things like reboot. Sometimes it, it, may, it might work without the sudo, but we type it anyway, just 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 in case. Sudo. Then we're gonna type in reboot. R E B O O T. We're gonna close that up. We're gonna close that up with a quotation. We're gonna hit enter. Boom. It's sending it out, and let's see what happens. All right, sending it the payload to this uh, Raspberry Pi, the one ninety two, that one sixty eight, that one that ten, and it worked. We know it worked because af right after it sent that payload, we got a message saying that the connection to that, that Raspberry Pi, the 192, that 168, that one, that 10 is, has been closed. That means the, re the computer has been restarted. So again, this is pretty cool. It's a pretty powerful tool. Now, uh, the reason I made this video, I made this video so you guys, uh, so you guys can see how easy it is to hack a Raspberry Pi, and hopefully, you guys in the future change your username and password. And hopefully you, uh, you don't use this video uh, to do mischievous things like hacking other people's Raspberry Pi. So you'll use all this knowledge for good. Now that's pretty much it. All right guys, how did you like the video? That's pretty much it. Now if you guys like this video, I need you guys to give it a like and also subscribe to my channel. I'm Rissin from RaspberryTech.com and thank you guys for watching.